All right, everyone. Hello, Mark Sajan again, and uh, this time take a look at the uh, much uh, more completed scene. It's not a hundred percent, but it is uh, quite an improvement. Now, uh, just let me quickly create a quick render shift cube, and uh, this is what we have. This is the viewport model. Okay, there's another model, uh, and uh, this is without any controllers affecting it so this is natural state now I want to explore what you see and why you see that just let me show it so first of all we have a physical camera and we have multiple cameras one is uh, tied to the head uh, it's enough in this case but we can create a special face camera uh, for the lip sync but right now it's enough and the other camera is not a physical type of camera it's a simple classical type now let me alt w set back my scene and uh, actually uh, this divided part is set uh, separated for the control cam now control camera sh will show the, the control panel for us there's nothing special but anytime if, if someone gets lost you just have to press c go back to control camera and now you see the controls so uh, what this does it's uh, if I'm pressing shift C that might revert the camera so this is what we have this is our, uh, our control camera and uh, the trickery here is just it is a free camera but we can link uh, the camera to the control panel so if you move away the camera that might affect uh, later on that might affect uh, uh, the camera as well if you move away the control panel uh, the other trick is what you see here is these uh, these two um, red panel, and these are actually limiting ranges. There's a near clip and a far clip. Now right now it's pretty much narrow. What it does, it actually cuts off the figure. So even if the figure is really close to the camera panel you will only see a slice of it so there's no chance that it covers too much just let me go to the camera view and and uh, move away this is what it does so the clipping is actually as you see it's indicated here is just showing a slice a tiny slice so this helps us if you have a quite crowded scene and you are afraid you don't see the control panel uh, but you want to keep it close to the center you can do it that way because the camera can clip uh, off uh, the unnecessary parts. Now the other thing is, right now y you I'm, I'm I'm already um, restricted, so these are frozen. Uh, these elements are not a you cannot select them because these are frozen, but the controls are ready to roll. So uh, just let me show what I do have. Uh, with the controls just let me quickly adjust it okay so I will just turn off the scene okay I will drag and drop it because I need more space especially because of the recording shift F I'm going perspective zooming in so and here we go so this is about eyes it's opening up the eye that's cool now let me open up the other one this is about eye size now this is actually a two set controller so there's eye size separately okay so we can play with those and what you see inside the tiny one is actually about the pupil so uh, okay this is this is it now the other thing is the brows eyebrows uh, sorry uh, closing up and down now if something is suspicious we can move it that way and this is not really affecting uh, the eye size so it you have to be careful when you're using this one but uh, but in 90% it works fine so left eye size uh, by closing that's cool okay now the other thing is the uh, the eyebrow so eyebrow shows up the uh, position center so we have quite some uh, room to do and as you see because the screen wrap it also influences uh, 
the forehead and because forehead is influenced uh, the hair is also influenced a little bit and um, the mouth controls there's the mouth cavity some more air here there uh, so it's also working fine uh, just the eyelids let me drop them a bit here's also just a too much open and uh, yeah I don't want to make it too close okay now uh, the gel we can open it up and also there is the protrusion and the smile now the smile is linked to this gel area so just let me show it so it is working with the gel controller here we have a couple uh, scales, rulers, and mouth cavity is as it is. And here's the protrusion. So you can open it up and we'll close it a bit more. Just let me open up the gel a little bit more. And we have names. Uh, now, this one looks a little bit different, but uh, the concept is the same. So we have all the phonemes, and there is some nose controller, and nose, this nose controller is actually do this. So if there's some disgust, or you want to emphasize a phoneme, that works so uh, fine with this. Okay, now uh, what else we have? Uh, we still have these controllers. So if I'm moving to animation mode and go to rotation. Uh, I want to make sure that's a uh, rotation local. Just let me slightly rotate it. Maybe tilt. Check it from the camera. This is the physical camera. Shift F, save frame. And uh, let me render it now. Okay, so Shift Q. Hey. So this guy is some kind of a happy. Hey, what's up? Now, of course, it's not the final. Uh, it has no textures. It is a proxy. This is just uh, to to work well uh, in the viewport and uh, to create a couple tests. So, but what when we are dealing with the final animation, we have to keep in mind that we don't really want to increase rendering time, especially for animation, and especially if if you are just spending time on studying uh, animation and creating these facial morphs. So. Uh, for this reason, there is no, uh, there's no, nothing special in here. Ninety percent of the content is painted, and uh, when it's something is not painted, it is uh, using a normal bump. So what I do with most of these uh, materials that we will see in the rendering is there is a diffuse color. It's as a standard physical map. And uh, in the bump map channel, there is a normal bump uh, kind of a container that contains two maps. One map is the additional bump. It's actually nothing else, just a copy of the color. So this is, okay, this is about the hair. This is just a basic painted hair in my box. And um, uh, the normal map is looking like this one. Normal map is generated in Modbox with extraction. This is the map for the for the top hair. I guess it's the top. No, it's the bottom part. No, it's the top part. It is. Yeah, it is the top part. And uh, we also have facial texture. And there is some uh, uh, you know, content of the teeth and for the tongue. Now let me turn on the layers so layer explorer just let me get it back and what you see I will actually turn off the rendering turn on the rendering and turn off the viewport model and just let me shift Q quick render and this is what you see in the viewport with lighted uh, and this is uh, the final one okay so there are some textures it's not that super detailed and it's relatively fast. It is not an HD, it is a 1280, so it's a half. But even this 
frame is 14 seconds so it's relatively fast to, uh, to deal with and if we are zooming in it's uh, it's not absolutely without any noise but there's nothing really uh, to worry about okay so for animation purposes it will be fine now what else we have so there are many many controllers all the phonemes all, all the mouth mouth cavity many of the eyes as you see we can change the size of the eyeballs we can change many things uh, one thing that might worth to deal with is just let me go to all W and go to perspective shift F and F4 and what I want to uh, get back is the rig okay because within the rig there is something called an FFD space warp now this space warp is created just let me quickly show what it does so we have a what uh, let me a teapot okay so top view creating a teapot alt Q isolation increase segments a little bit and what I do need is uh, create space warps f instead of forces we need a uh, geometric deformable FFD box and let me create this FFD box a, 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 a. okay that's it and uh, maybe country points I, I don't need that much country points to oh free by free will be fine free by free I told you free by free okay and uh, this segments I want to increase so and bend this to the space warp and when I start moving it whoa so this is what happens this warp is actually oversizing the guy now I have some trouble here because it's just uh, I was not that accurate uh, there's some mismatch but if I change the size of it just let me remove and change the size to a smaller one front it left left okay move it a little bit higher and even smaller that would be fine now I guess so tie it again to space warp and move okay now it, now it looks better so this is what it makes now we have a simple kind of a magnetic field a force field in uh, in a way so but we can do fancy things with uh, with this kind of effect so I can just delete this guy and take a look at back again now what I did is actually there is a rectangle and this space warp it has a linked X form so I've selected the control points the middle control points and while those were selected I've used a called a new modifier from the list remember still the control points were selected this is why it indicates and linked X form is bending these points to this rectangle so when I start moving this rectangle even if the bones are there it will affect my model okay so just let me undo this and I can move it I can rotate it if I wish I can even scale it if I wish okay it's not just the head that's tied to this guy uh, but also uh, the hair and other parts but, but as you see this model are not binded to the space warp and the reason is pretty simple because this is just a rendering a resolution model okay I already mentioned about this uh, phenomenon and trickery uh, in an earlier tutorial but what is actually tied is not the rendering what is actually tied is the viewport model so on this model you can find this FFD bending this uh, uh, modifier bending the hair is following the changes of the of the head if you also attach 
uh, for example, if you, if you bind the hair to the uh, FFD here, it will double the change. So in that case, what happens is nothing else that the hair will be inflated and it will fly off the head. Okay, so this is why just the head is affected and the eyeballs are affected and the teeth and everything. But the hair is connected to the head by and with the skin wrap. Okay, just let me turn it back. So, viewport turned off. Going back to uh, the rendering resolution. Uh, selecting the camera. Just let me check it. And here we go. I can just slightly rotate it. And um, go perspective. So, I want to change. Open up the mouth a bit. More. And other side also we need to we want to see some more smile out of the nose. Yeah, it's not not that good. Okay. Other size. Yeah, that's something very happy. So shift Q. Okay, <laughs> now it is it is fine. Uh, next will be about how to set up the animation, and how to work with the sounds file, and how to manage those. But uh, this is all about the controllers and the rendering setup and uh, and a couple details in the background, uh, just to be inspired. So thank you very much. See you next time. Goodbye.